I feel very called to become a member of the Catholic Church. Love the Catholic Church. It's just the best place to be. From the studios of EWTN, this is Open Line. In North America, call toll-free 1-800-585-9396. That's 1-800-585-9396. Outside North America, call 1-205-271-2985. You can also send an email to openline at EWTN.com. You know, Father Larry, when you live in a cave yeah. for hours at a time like Mr. McCall does, you're out of touch with what's going on in the wow. rest of the world. And we're getting we're getting Mr. McCall up to speed as he's uh, he Uh-oh. is he's banished to his uh, cave dwelling location of the control room for you know two hours at a time in the afternoon. Wow. So we have to keep him abreast of what's going on in the world around him. Well, there you go. At least he gets out of purgatory early because he's in it now. There you go. There you go. There ain't no doubt about that. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to EWTN's Open Line Thursday. Father Larry Richards is in the house. We're talking the new evangelization as we do every Thursday. Your ticket to the program, 1-800-585-9396. That's toll-free anywhere in North America. one 800 585 Nine three nine six. If you're outside the United States and Canada, your number is one two zero five two seven one two nine eight five, and we'll put you straight to the front of the line at one two zero five two seven one two nine eight five. Well, it must be that time. <laughs> Somebody can, was calling. It's, it's time to send an email. If you, you can email us at openline at EWTN.com. Or you can even text Father Larry if you turn the ringer off on your phone. Uh, text the letters EWTN to 55000. Wait for a response. Text your first name and your question. Message and data rates may apply. I'm Jack Williams. Michael McCall produces the program. Your call screener today is... Mr. Rich Jesse. Wow. Rich Jesse lives in a household of two people. He and wow. his lovely wife, Laura. And this time tomorrow, he will be living in a household of three. Wow. He is lovely wife, tomorrow? Laura. And the, the newest member of the Jesse family arrives on the scene tomorrow morning. Wow. Just think, it's going to be a little Larry, I'm sure. That I think that that's where they're, that's where they're leaning. Yeah, there you go. Well, I, I, yeah, <laughs> probably not. <laughs> probably. Not. Well, I call I call uh, I call Rich Three Sticks because he's uh, he's Richard Jephtha Jesse the Third. Oh, so, so I got to make a four. Yeah, that? I got a feeling if it's a boy, you're probably a long shot to get ah, the naming rights. Dear, jeez, uh, I'll tell you. I've told him if it's a boy, I'm going to call him Ivy. <laughs> there you go. Three, I get three it. I sticks, get it. Three sticks and his son Ivy. So yeah, exactly. now, you, you have no idea how many emails I'll get explaining that now. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I know. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a quick learner. <laughs> Once yeah. again, the number is one eight hundred for the mean <laughs> from the mean streets of Pittsburgh. One eight hundred five eight five nine three nine six is our toll free number. We'd love to hear from you today. So, mm-hmm. Father Larry, we talked to do evangelization, we and do. I I heard a great uh, someone was talking i can't remember who it was just in the last couple days and they were talking about um you know the new evangelization and the old evangelization are really the same in so much as we are called to take the gospel of jesus to the people we come in contact with where we come in contact with them Mm -hmm. and we come in contact with them in different places now than someone in the first century would have come in contact with people Um, absolutely so it's so maybe sometimes our methods need to be a little different well, of course, in the first century, they didn't have emails, and they didn't have uh, TV, and they didn't have radio, and they didn't have television. So we need to, on the new evangelization, as we new, use these things that God has available to us, and we, we evangelize in that way. That's why it's called new, because it, those were not available before. 1-800-585-9396 is our toll-free number. 1-800. It's toll-free. 1-800-585-9396. You know... Text Father Larry. Michael McCall is scanning the text line as we speak. Wow. You can text the letters EWTN to 55000. Wait for a response. Text your first name and your question. Message and data rates may apply. You know, Father Larry, you felt uh, fairly early on by the standard of most testimonies that you hear, you, you, you felt the, the Lord was calling you to this lifestyle. 
and mm-hmm. uh, you entered uh, college seminary, which really we don't even have anymore for the most part. Uh, high school seminary. That's what I meant. I meant high school <laughs> seminary. We don't. <laughs> we have lots of college seminaries. <laughs> you know, high, high school seminary, which was was far more common when you entered than it certainly is um, today. Mm-hmm. But did you have this zeal for evangelism early I, on that you have now? I had it more than I ever expected because, again, as I've said before, I was converted by Billy Graham at 17 years old when I gave my life to the Lord. And then uh, I says, when I wrote the letter to get in seminary, I says, uh, I want to bring the world to Jesus Christ. So I always thought Billy Graham did it for the Protestants. I wanted to be able to do it for the Catholics and bring them into So my very first letter, I, I still have a copy of it. I sit there and I it says, because the priest came back the very next day when he got this from your EPA, he brought it down and he turned my letter around and he wrote i'm here i want to see you so and my grandmother came home before i did and she found the letter and i didn't tell anybody i was going to go to seminary and so she's waiting at the top of the steps when i get in and she <laughs> says so uh, you want to go to seminary and i go yeah how do you know and she says well there's letter there and it was my letter turned around and it's so funny when i go back to it because it was so corny it says i want to bring the world to jesus christ to bring the good news of jesus to all the world so god is good <laughs> Well, and look and look what he's done. Look what he's done. He's Can you, you imagine? He's put you on a medium that literally has the potential to reach the entire world or the biggest part of it. Absolutely, God is good. Little Lawrence Richards, it's amazing. Can you, you even would have imagine? Imagined. Again, one eight hundred five eight five nine three nine six is our toll free number. If you're outside the United States and Canada, guess what? You have a mandate also to evangelize. Your number is one two zero five two seven one. Two nine eight five, and we'll put you straight to the front of the line at one two zero five two seven one two nine eight five. Now, let me ask you this, Father. You know, I was part of, as we've talked about briefly before, I was part of a, a charismatic evangelical campus ministry group in my college days, and there was a little uh, brick wall behind one of the classroom buildings on campus that stood about five bricks high, so it was two and a half or three feet off the ground. And it was right in a high traffic area where, you know, 80% of the students during class breaks would pass through this particular area. And we used to stand on this little wall during class breaks and we would preach. And mm-hmm. this, this university was near, very near where I went to high school. And when I would be up there, you know, <laughs> preaching... You know, it was usually well and good, and you look around, but all of a sudden, a little bit of apprehension would always enter my heart when I would catch the gaze of somebody that I knew Mm -hmm. from high school. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's the fear that a lot of people have when they think about evangelization is how they're going to be perceived by the people that they know. Mm Mm-hmm. Absolutely. But I think that if you, uh, especially when you're younger, when they already know who you are, then that's not going to be a problem. You know, it's only when they sit there, like sometimes when we live one thing, we preach another. So if we, and you weren't doing that, I'm sure. But, you know, they know you. And so they go, what's he doing up there? And so (laughs) it could always be like, hmm. You know, but if you're coming off and you're just uh, living as best you can what you're preaching, then there's usually not a problem with that. And that's the biggest thing. It's like, hey, I know you. I go, yes, you do. (laughs) and so this is part of who i am also so but with me it's easy they expect that stuff off you as a priest huh (laughs) just getting started on an open line thursday the number is 1-800-585-9396 one line open right now at 1-800-585-9396 ewtn's open line thursday with father larry richards Colin Donovan. Entering university, I had the religious understanding of someone catechized in the 1960s. That changed when a fellow freshman asked me if a Catholic could use the pill. My uninformed answer was, sure, why not? I then went and read Pope Paul VI's encyclical, Humanae Vitae, and concluded, this is truth. I've never looked back in my love of our Catholic faith since. Open Line with Colin Donovan, Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern on EWTN Radio. Stay up to date on the latest EWTN TV and radio shows, books, art, CDs, and DVDs from Religious Catalog when you sign up for Wings, our weekly e-newsletter. Get Wings today at EWTN.com. Dr. Ray Garendi. When did you come to the faith? I came to the faith when my kids were teenagers. 
or when they were grown. That's a source of guilt. Why couldn't I come to the faith so I could raise them in the faith? Okay, be grateful that you came to the faith when you did. The timing is not always ours. Now, since you're deeper in the faith, you can do one thing that you wouldn't have done before. You can pray for the children. Be grateful that you came to the faith at some point. Let the children see what mom is like now, what dad is like now, compared to how they were raised before mom or dad came to the faith. Not a source of guilt, source of gratitude. This is Bishop William Medley of the Diocese of Owensboro. This is Al Cresta, host of Cresta in the Afternoon. Hi, I'm Archbishop William Laurie, the Archbishop of Baltimore, and you're listening to EWTN Radio. This is Open Line on the EWTN Global Catholic Radio Network. If you have a question or comment, call 1-800-585-9396. Outside North America, call one 205 271-2985 or send an email to openline at EWTN.com If you get a busy signal keep trying. We will roll through as many folks as we can today on Open Line Thursday. The number once again 1-800-585-9396 Our leadoff hitter today is Christina in the great state of California listening to EWTN on Sirius XM channel 130. Christina's got a great question Father Larry. Christina you're on with Father. Hello, Christina. Hi. Hi, how are you today? I am blessed. How are you? I am very blessed, too. Good job and highly favored, yes. What's up? Yes. Um, okay, I have a question. So okay. I'm, I'm, up, I'm looking for universities to study, and mm-hmm. where I live, there's a lot of Christian and Baptist universities, but there's a Catholic university that's about two hours from me, and mm-hmm. I want to study religious studies and music. Okay. So hopefully one day I can produce Christian music, like Catholic music. Sure. So I wanted to know what was the best way of coming to that, I guess. Is it better to study religious studies at church, like through Bible study? Or should I go to the Catholic university that's a couple hours from me or any kind of Christian school Good. Well, if you're going to do religious studies, I think it would be best if you went to a Catholic school. But uh-huh. you got to watch this because some Catholic universities are worse than a public university. And it's it's hard to say that, but it just is. I know one Catholic university, uh, very uh, not in my in Erie, but outside of here, not too far. And the head of the Department of Religion is an atheist, and it's a Catholic university. Okay. Well, so it should, so you got to really uh, if it's a Catholic university you got to make sure it's a good Catholic university because if you're going to do religious studies you need to learn the truth you know and that's the problem sometimes all they do is uh, mix uh, mix up people because you know it's one thing to t- uh, teach the truth and then say now these are divergent opinions but this is the truth it's another thing to just bring up everybody's opinion and not show anything as truth because what a catholic church is supposed to do first in a catholic university is to to instill the revelation teach revelation if we're not teaching revelation the catholic university should not exist go and make yourself a pagan university because that's what you are. But the number one thing of a Catholic university is to proclaim the truth as established by Jesus Christ. Period. That's all there is to it. So if you if there's a university like that around you, go for it. If there's not, then run from it. Okay. Perfect. Okie doke. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you, Christina. We appreciate the phone call. The number again, 1-800-585-9396, toll-free anywhere in North America, 1-800-585-9396. You can also send us an email, openline at ewtn.com, and put something like Thursday or the new evangelization, something like that in the subject line, and we will get that too. Father Larry, next up is Tyler in the great state of Ohio listening to EWTN on St. Gabriel Radio. Tyler, you're on with Father Larry. Hello, Tyler. Hi, Father. What's up? 
I am blessed. Uh, I'm blessed, too. I'm calling because both my wife and I are straight old Catholic. Uh-huh. And long story short, we have three kids, uh-huh. and our last child is, now he's very, very sick. I mean, he's, uh-huh. you know, alive and functioning and good, but, so how do we, I basically don't want to contracept and try the natural family planning method, and she's scared to death. Sure. And kind of doesn't, agree. she would rather do, you know, contraception. So sure, of course. How do you know about that very, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. You do it very gently. The first thing you do is you start praying about it because every day you should be praying for your wife. You know, often... Uh, we want to make people do things, and uh, Jesus has never done that, so we can't do that. So we can, you can start praying for her and fasting for her that you know that she comes to know Jesus more and more, and then that's what happens. Is then it becomes a byproduct of her seeking God's will because the problem is is the reason she wants to contracept is because she's petrified of having another child right now, right? So being petrified of that, she her the issue that needs to be dealt with isn't the contraception thing that is that need to be dealt with though but it has to be her trust in the father her trust that the god of the universe loves the both of you more than you love the both of you and that the god of the universe will guard you protect you and give you what is best for you and what you need so that's the reason that we don't contracept because we're trusting god and we work with god but if we don't have this real trust of god then we live in this fear about well what if what if and if we so again so the first thing you do is you just pray for her and be patient with her and uh, work her towards not so much I got to get you to contra- not contracept but I got to get you to trust in the father and then contraception will not become an issue it'll just become I trust God more than I take trust my next breath do you understand yeah, so what do, you, what do I do in the meantime? I mean, after that? I mean, is that the... Well, that's uh, officially, that's yes, where it would be. Now, again, uh, but you can do the natural family planning, and what I would do is make sure that you're... Uh, um, you really have done study about that. Have you studied? Have you went to NFP class before? No, that's kind of my next step. For me, sure. class is... She's not going to take it, but, I mean, at least I can take it. And Absolutely, and then you can explain it to her. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, yeah. so, again, that would be the first thing. So you really have a sense. And, again, you're asking a celibate how to tell your wife to, to do this. You know, I, this isn't my uh, uh, forte. I know if a couple comes in, I can talk to the two of them, and then we talk about trusting the Father and different things. But since I'm only talking to you, the only thing I can do is get you, the okay, to start the praying that, go to your own class, and then work on her with trust issues with God, and then the other thing will come in as a secondary uh, but until that happens, that's what you really got to ask the Lord uh, to help you and guide you on. Okay. So then, I'll say, let's say that I mean uh, we know, we know the situation. I can't engage in I guess the activity contraception correctly, knowing you know knowing our teaching, correct? I mean, I hey, just, correct. You know, Absolutely, that would be uh, gotta, that would be correct. Objectively, but again, I'm talking to you for two minutes on the radio. I would talk to your parish priest. But you got to follow the teaching of the church. There's no way around the teaching of church. You know, sometimes people want me to sit there and say, but it's okay for you. I, I can't do that, even in confession. You know, so, uh, but again, no, you need to sit there and talk with a priest who knows you and how to, bo- how to best deal with this pastorally between you and your wife. God bless you, Tyler. We will keep you in our prayers, to be sure. Father Larry Mary's watching on YouTube, and she wants to know, what's the best prayer to pray before going and evangelizing? Oh, it's always a prayer to the Holy Spirit. You know, the one I tell everybody to go to is the Cardinal Mercier prayer. And you can you can look up the Cardinal Mercier prayer, and it's the one I say almost every day, and God rest him, Father Scanlon from Steubenville used to say it all the time, too. And it's, O oh, Holy Spirit, beloved of my soul, I adore you. Enlighten me, guide me, strengthen me, console me. Tell me what I should do. Give me your orders. I promise to submit myself to all that you desire of me and to accept all that you permit to happen to me let me only know your holy will so that's one prayer but you can just do the traditional come holy spirit you can just say spirit of living god use me today and the spirit of living god will but the only one and we have to all know this the only one that will ever convert anyone is the holy spirit not you not me not our stories none of that if we ever ever even think of that we're filled with pride it's all god it's none of us 
period. So it's important you pray the Holy Spirit. Next stop, Columbus, Ohio. Lee is in Columbus listening on 102.7 St. Gabriel Radio. Lee, you're on with Father Larry. Hello, Lee. Hello, Father Larry. How are you today? I am blessed as always. How are you? I am blessed as can be. I'm so excited Good. to talk to you. I listen to you all the time. And Good. Columbus is one of my favorite places. I have four uh, friends are coming up this weekend from Columbus just to visit me. Well, that's wonderful. Absolutely. So what's going on out there? Uh, just enjoying the hot day in the cornfield. <laughs> yeah, so, there you go. <laughs> but I just wanted to say thank you for everything that you've done thank with your YouTube you. channels, and I've really enjoyed it, and it's really helped me. Bless and I try God. really changed a lot of ways I talked and, you know, try to uh, bring God to people. But we have mm-hmm. some friends that, you know, they just don't believe in an afterlife. And you sure. start talking. And I tell people, like, you know, Jesus loves you. Yeah, you mm-hmm. you know that. And mm-hmm. they just think it's a bunch of hooey. Is there sure. any advice to do anything else, you know, to uh, maybe open their eyes? You know, because I don't try to shove anything down their throat. Sure, very work. good. Um, and again... Advice? There are atheists that I've dealt with, for, you know, m- most of my life that never come around to the other side yet. I have faith that one day they will. And so, you know, just because, and there was people that Jesus dealt with that never came to him, you know. So all we can do is keep praying and keep witnessing. And we keep loving these people. And, you know, because, again, the deepest need in for everyone's heart is to be loved. And so that is where we need to meet everybody. You know, now, again, when we love people, that means we don't become la-la with them. And, oh, it's everything you do is fine. That's not what we're saying. But when we love people, we meet them where they are, and we walk with them to where God wants them to be. Because that's what God does with us. And so we need to do the same thing. So, again, I think just by being with, present to them, loving them, praying for them, fasting for them, then the next, the Holy, and asking the Holy Spirit to lead you, were to uh, take them next that would be the best thing also though if they're open to it i say okay uh, my biggest thing like when a person is uh struggling with that is i say i want you to seek truth because you want to know what's true if god was real you'd want to know him right well of course well okay i'll be open to truth and you know I, and I, one of the books i always start off with people is mere christianity with c.s lewis because it just talks basically about how, you know, he was an atheist, C.S. Lewis, and then he became a God believer, and then he became a, a Christian, and how he got to that. But then there's other things out there by uh, Father Spitzer, and that if he's more intellectual, the, you know, talks about the new proofs of God's existence, using all the reason that we have today about why we believe God would exist, and like getting them these books and say, you know, I, got, I, I just read this book, and it's phenomenal. It might answer some of your questions, and then you give a gift to them. Not like, here, this is going to help you but like i read this and i think it really it answered some of my really interesting questions that you've asked me or talked about you might be interested and then give them a book like that good idea well thank you for everything you have no idea how much thanks you, just little things that you've done you don't thanks need. lee have a great day pray for me god bless you i do pray for you pray for you me. better okay we do it every day every morning every night god bless you god bless bye Next up is Kelsey. She's in Kansas City, Missouri. I'm assuming it's a she. She's in Kansas City, Missouri, listening to EWTN Radio on KEXS. Kelsey, are you a female? Yes, I am. There you go. Good Thank job. Thank goodness. Jack was getting worried there. What's <laughs> up, Kelsey? Are you trying to say I sound like a man? No. no. I, I just it, it just occurred to me that when I said she, I thought, ooh, I hope it's a she. Maybe Kelsey is not a she, so... You sound very much like a woman, Kelsey. What is up? Thank you. Uh, Father Larry, my question is, as my husband and I have been discussing and debating, that, you know, God knows every hair counted on your head, and and God knows the plan for everybody. So then why do we pray for, let's say, somebody to be healed from a sickness, an illness, Mm -hmm. or something, when... When God already knows the time and the place that that person is going to die, and if it is, you know, wh- why do we pray if if God already has His decision and and you know because. 
First of all, because Jesus told us to ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find. He told us how to pray with the Our Father, and he taught us that your will be done. And so what we do is we pray is because we're cooperating with the will of God. And so it's the way God shows that, that he's real and he's present and he's part of our lives. So when you and I truly pray, then and God answers our prayers, it just gives us this recurrence of our faith that you are present, Lord. You are near. You do hear us. He already knew you were going to ask that prayer, and he already knew you going to answer that prayer from the beginning of time, of course. But that's why you do it, because he asked you to, and then it increases your own faith. Does that help? Okay. Yes, thank you. Thank you for calling us, Kelsey. Now stay out of trouble out there. Always. There you go. <laughs> Jack doesn't, so I'm glad you do. God bless you, God Kelsey. bless you, Kelsey. Appreciate the phone call. <laughs> that opens up a line for you at 1-800-585-9396, toll-free anywhere in North America, one 800 585 Nine three nine six. If you're outside the United States and Canada, we'd love to hear from you. Your number is one two zero five two seven one two nine eight five. Open line Thursday, talking the new evangelization with Father Larry Richards. Most men will do almost anything to avoid deep theological discussions. Well, you don't need a doctorate in theology to listen to and enjoy the Catholic Cafe. Join me, Deacon Jeff Drzymski, along with my trusty sidekick, Tom Dorian, as we try and make manly sense out of living the Catholic faith. The Catholic Cafe, Saturdays at 4 p.m. Eastern and Sundays at 5 a.m. Eastern on EWTN Radio. Live truth, live Catholic. Listeners to Catholic Radio, I think, benefit most, at least initially, from what I call remedial catechesis. What Catholic Radio does is it uh, becomes an echo chamber for the teaching authority of the Catholic Church. And what we're doing is teaching many things which uh, have been neglected over the last 40, 50 years. If you listen to Catholic Radio, you know what the Catholic Church teaches. Al Cresta thinks Catholic Radio is important. So should you. Christ is the answer with Father John Ricardo. John 14. This is Jesus in the upper room with the disciples before he's going out to his sacrifice of himself for our salvation. And Philip says to the Lord, show us the Father and we'll be satisfied. Jesus looks at Philip and says, Philip, have I been with you all this time? Don't you understand? When you see me, you're looking at the Father. In fact, only two people throughout human history have given rise to the question, not who is he, but what is he? The two people are Buddha and Jesus. Buddha's answer was, don't come to me, don't look to me, look to my doctrine, look to what I teach. Jesus' answer was, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble of heart. Jesus is explicitly claiming to be God. This is Open Line on the EWTN Global Catholic Radio Network. If you have a question or comment, call 1-800-585-9396. Outside North America, call 1-205-271-2985 or send an email to openline at EWTN.com. Hey, big day on Catholic Answers Live today. Our very own Vice President of Theology, Mr. Colin Donovan, is going to be on Catholic Answers Live. That starts at 6 Eastern time tonight on most of these EWTN-affiliated stations. So be sure to tune in to Open Forum Q&A on Catholic Answers Live. Colin Donovan in hour number one and Senior Apologist Jimmy Aiken in hour number two. Back to the phones we go. Catherine is in Victoria, Texas, listening to EWTN on Sirius XM Channel 130. Catherine, I spent some time with your bishop in Orlando. He's fantastic. Yeah, he is. What's your question today for Father Larry? I, I want to know, uh, like the previous caller was talking about a Catholic University, how mm-hmm. does an atheist become the head of the Catholic University? Isn't there, I mean, how does that happen? 
Well, he's not the head of the university. He's head of the religion department. And how does that happen? I have no idea. You know, so, but he's been there forever. And so I used to tell my boys when I used to teach at an all Catholic high school, if they were going to that place, I says, beware of the nutcase who's in charge and teaches all the introduction to religion classes. He's an atheist, you know, and so it's, you know, some of these places, the problem is, is somehow they get uh, a foot uh, in the door. Yeah, and then they become a, t- a tenured or tenure. Yeah, tenured. tenured they get yeah. tenured, and then you know, and then people, oh, well, he's a good person. He's showing all sides. It's stupid, you know, but it happens, and it's all over the place, you know. So again, that's why I'm I I never ever sit there and say just go to a Catholic university because it's Catholic. You got to make sure it's a good Catholic university. Not to mention, Father Larry, we need missionaries on every college campus, don't we? Absolutely. And I went to a public high school, and it was amazing how much uh, I got religion. And I been uh, and I found Jesus at a, at, a, at a public school, you know, because it's who you hang out with. And I was also campus minister at Penn State in Barron. And I had more kids I brought to Christ than ever. You know, it was unbelievable how many people came to Christ at a public school. So, I mean, it is possible to find Christ in places that are not Catholic schools. But if the Catholic schools are really teaching the faith there's nothing like it you know nothing like it to send someone to a good catholic university god bless you Catherine. we appreciate the phone call 1-800-585-9396 that's the number steve used he's in northern michigan listening on barriga broadcasting steve you're on with father larry hello steve hi father larry thanks for taking my call absolutely what is is that um we got some friends that we associate with in Mm -hmm. there of the homosexual lifestyle Uh and um you know, how much participation can we do with them without seeming like we're condoling? Because, uh, you know, I have Catholic friends who are divorced and remarried. I mean, mm-hmm. isn't that almost as bad as well, of course another it is. type of lifestyle? <laughs> Absolutely. That's why, again, my thing is that Jesus ate and drank with sinners. So we can eat and drink with sinners, too. I even do it in the rectory where there's other priests because they're sinners, and they they can sit there and tell everybody they're eating with a sinner, too, because they're eating with me. So, again, that doesn't mean, like, if they ask us, like, let's say you're out to dinner with them, and it's okay to go out to dinner. You're going to have people that say, no, I have nothing to do with them. Well, that wasn't what Jesus Christ did. Jesus did. Now, what we do is when we enter into these relationships, relationships with people, we need to bring them up instead of them bringing us down. Meaning that, you know, we, we talk to them, we love them, and if they ask us, you know, do you, do you agree with our lifestyle? Say, no, but I'm still going to love you. I'm going to still pray for you, but I'm still going to be with you and walk with you. Again, is what I always say. We walk with people, not just leaving them where we are. You know, again, a lot of people just want to be accepted as they are. Well, if you want someone to accept you as you are, just go through the McDonald's drive through and that person's going to accept you just as you are. They don't care what you're doing as long as you give them some money. You know, what we do is we love people, and loving people is accepting and meeting people where they are, but never leaving them there. We're all growing. We help each other grow. So, but we need to meet people where they are. Yes? Great. So, how would you maybe deal with a situation like, hey, let's go out to dinner. We do that once in a while. We hang out, have Mm -hmm. a good time. We do the things Mm -hmm. you mentioned about, hey, we're going to go out and celebrate our anniversary. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, and again, it, it doesn't exist, no doubt, that does it, you know, because if they got married, again, they, they didn't get married. Married is a religious term. They can take up, talk about it all they want, you know, but again, I wouldn't sit there, like, again, as people usually ask almost every week, could I go to a wedding and that? I would normally say no, you know, you don't do right. that kind of stuff, you know, or if yeah. they were okay. sitting there saying, we're all going to a gay movie tonight. You want to come? No, you don't want to do that kind of stuff. But if you're just going right, to a okay, regular... So- you don't ever want to so sin with regular them. Regular dinner and things is fine, but when it's focused on the, the sinful nature of exactly. something, then you're like, no, we, no. We, we don't celebrate those things. I'm sorry. Yeah, and I wouldn't even say but, that. I wouldn't even say we don't celebrate. They're saying, no, you know, I, I, that would make me uncomfortable. And if anybody, you know, if they want you to love them as they are, they have to love you as you are, too. It's a two-way street. Okay? Decline and say no. <laughs> Absolutely. I In just say no. Way. I yeah, no I'm not I, I not even I can't. No, I have something else going on that night. And we'll be praying okay. for you that night though. Okay? So that's a big thing cuz oh, you should be nice, praying for nice. them all the time. Okay? Well, thank you very much. That was a great Thank, you. thank you. Thanks. God bless you. 1-800-585-9396 is our toll-free number. Next up is Aurora. She's in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, listening to EWTN on Oklahoma Catholic Broadcasting. Aurora, you're on with Father Larry. Hello, Aurora. Hey. 
Hey. Hi. I ha- I have a thank you for calling uh, taking my call and I have a uh-huh. question. My son my son is getting in Cancun this month and he is not attending Catholic church anymore mm-hmm. since he was in college. Mm-hmm. He's going but he goes to a, a non denomination place. Uh-huh. And so I told him that he needs to go to confession uh, but he he told me to that he will think about it. He's not doing mm-hmm. it. Well, of course, if he's going to a non-denominational church, you know, he's, uh, oh dear, you know, when you, it's something when you turn your back on the faith for so many reasons. But, okay, your job, though, now is how do you get him back home to the faith? You know, that's the biggest thing. So the biggest thing you do is you pray for him and you love him and you've already told him what he needs to do. In the, you know, and he needs to know the consequences. If he gets married outside the church, of course, he won't be able to be a sponsor or a godfather to any of uh, your other children's kids if they, if they ask him because he'll be in a bad, a bad marriage, you know. And, but again, no. We don't want to come off with that first because so often these people don't even know Jesus Christ and we're just hitting them. If you do this, you're going to hell. I mean, come on. That ain't the way we uh, we do things. We talk about, you know, part of the loving people is telling the consequences of their sin, but they need to be set free by Jesus first. So again, you have to pray about what the Lord Jesus wants you to do to bring him back home to the faith. That's always the goal. How does your son get saved? What's your part in his salvation? Do you go and support him and love him and say, you know, you need to get this marriage blessed. You need to do this. Now, again, uh, people have different ways of doing that. So you have to ask the Lord how he's calling you to do that. But you want to do everything to get him back home to the faith. Okay? Does that help? Thank you. Thank you for calling. Thank you. Bye-bye. God bless you, Laura. Appreciate the phone call. That frees up a line for you at 1-800-585-9396. We'll head to San Antonio, Texas next. Melly is in San Antonio. Uh, Hello, Melly. Well, actually, it's Adam, Father. I, Adam. I made a mistake. It's Adam no, in Hammond. That's two entirely in, different realities. In, Sorry, is, Adam. In Hammond, in Hammond, Louisiana. <laughs> different location, different gender, different name, different everything. Adam, you're on with Father Larry. Hi, Adam. What's Hello, up? Today. Blessed. Um, my question is, as an unmarried young Catholic couple, um, uh-huh. we want to travel together. Um, okay. How should room arrangements be for traveling and going on vacation together? I'm a big one. If you're going to travel on vacation together, you should have two different rooms. You know, because it's I, I most people, it would be hard for me as a celibate male to be in the same room, even if you had two beds, you know, it just would, yeah. you know, especially yeah. so my biggest thing is you'd get two different rooms and that way she has her complete privacy and, and you're, you're guarding her and then you're protecting yourself too. Yes. Thank you, Father. I appreciate your help. Absolutely. God bless you. Now, everyone's been waiting with bated breath for Melly in San Antonio, Texas. <laughs> My mistake, Melly. Thanks for holding. You're on with Father Larry. Hi, Melly. No if, I have, if I have a second child and he's a son, I'm going to call him Adam. <laughs> there you <laughs> there go. There you go. <laughs> you should call him Larry. What's the matter with you people? <laughs> anyway, there, you go. Go. there you go. Lawrence. There you go. Lawrence is a great one. What's going on? Uh, well, a couple of questions. Uh, one... When speaking about a transgender person, um, like, for example, if it's uh, a guy that uh, looks like uh, he's had female surgery and so forth uh, or identifies uh, himself like that, do I refer to them as he or she when I'm speaking of them? Like, oh, I'm going to go tell so-and-so hi. Um, well, again, and the world would say you deal with him as uh, they identify. The church would say you deal with them as they were created. They were created in okay. the image and likeness of God as a man. So they can identify anything they want. It really doesn't matter, you know, but they are created in God's image. They are a man, period. Right. And, and now if in talking with uh, them or even somebody that... Uh, is sexually oriented of same sex and they say mm-hmm. well hey you know i i want you to call me 
a guy, you know, instead of a girl. Sure. Or, you know. Well, again, uh, you can... What, you can. What's the proper re- way to respond, you know, lovingly but truthfully? You can call people anything they want. If I come up to you and I say, I want you to call me Sally today, well, go for it. You know, if I want to be called Sally. But that still doesn't mean you're, uh, ident- you're still not accepting... Uh, that they are identify as a woman, you know, calling somebody uh, by a name they go by, you know, like when we were we were in college, we'd call all kinds of our friends different names, but that didn't make <laughs> it right, you know, so it didn't make them identify with something or other. So you can be kind if they do that, but if they're asking you to call them by, but you can't accept that they're uh, they're really a woman. You understand? So you right. again, my biggest thing is I wouldn't make any reference to any gender at all, so it doesn't become a fight. You know, but if they ask right. me, then I would tell them, but why fight over things? You know, now there are people that like to fight about things, and I, I'm one of those people sometimes, but if, it, if, it, if it's something that doesn't have to be a fight, I would try to not enter into one. Sure. Okay, well, sure. thank you, Father. Appreciate thank it. you. God bless you. I wish you'd remember that with me a little more often. Yeah, shut up. You know, what Father, you <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, one of the, when we're talking about these issues that affect our culture, one of the best ways that you can get a good perspective is to be a little picky about where you get your news and the sources oh, that you use for that. And one great source is the Catholic News Agency. It's the only uh, fast, reliable, and free Catholic news source that brings blogs, stories, opinions, and much more to your fingertips. For the latest Catholic news, visit Catholic News Agency. Dot com. It's an online service from us here at EWTN News. Back to the phones we go. Elodia is in Dallas, Texas. We'll stay in Texas, listening on Guadalupe Radio. Elodia, you're on with Father Larry. Hello, Elodia. Hi, How are you? I'm fine. How are you? Blessed. What's up? Well, uh, I have a couple of uh, family members that have uh, turned away from the church, and they go to abundant living and, and whatnot, sure. uh, non-denominational and all that stuff. And uh, we were talking, my niece and I, and, and she said, uh, it doesn't matter where they go as long as they go to church. Sure. And I said, well, that's not a church, that's a building. Sure. That's <laughs> our Lord is not in there. Uh-huh. Uh, body, blood, soul, and divinity it does, is not there. And then she came back with, well, God is everywhere. Mm-hmm. And I went back with the same response. No, yeah, he is everywhere, but he is present in the Catholic Church only. So mm-hmm. anyway, she was upset with me. And so how, well, sure. <laughs> what, else, <laughs> what else can I say? Because that even, and she just shook her head. You know, well, sure. Well, let's say, for instance, that you were raised in the uh, non-denominational church, and then you became a Catholic. And then your uh, aunt would look at you and say, you know, the Catholic church isn't correct. You know, it's a wrong, demonic church. What would you say back? How would you respond to that? Well, I would say that I found out the Catholic church is the true church. Sure, exactly. And they might totally disagree with you. So your niece, no matter what you say, she's still going to do what she feels. So that's why the biggest thing you've done, you've, again, you've already, you've already uh, 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 made your opinion known. Now the biggest thing for you to do is to pray for her and to fast for her. And then great things can happen when you do that. And you share with her, not like, oh, you, well, you know that uh, Jesus isn't in that building, because that's almost offensive. But you can sit there and say, oh, Oh, I could never leave the church because every time, every Sunday, I get to receive the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus. Wow. Oh, okay, I'll be praying for you. And that's all you do. You don't have to sit there and say, well, he's not there. You've know, you got to sit there and say, oh, I know he's there and he loves you so much. Well, uh, you know, I, I have a temper and she just makes me. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I know, I know. We all do as best we can. Okay, well, thank you, Okay, Father. God bless you. Thanks for calling us. You're number one in Texas today, Father Larry. This time we're going to Lubbock, Texas. Lourdes is in Lubbock listening on, uh, well, I'm not sure where she's listening, but she's listening in Lubbock. Lourdes, you're on with Father Larry. <laughs> Hi, Father Hello. Larry. <laughs> How are you? Is it Lourdes or is it Lourdes? Lourdes. Lourdes, there you go. What's up, Lourdes? Hey, um, I hey. have a question. I baptized two little boys, which were my cousin's children, and okay. 
they were Catholic, and, you know, we made a promise to Christ, you know, to raise them up in sure. the faith. Uh-huh. Well, they decided to leave the faith, and I just always find myself buying them rosaries and stuff like Good. that to send to them. And I just uh, wanted to send one to one of them, and she kind of said, well, we're out of town already. Well, you know, kind of didn't want to accept the present, I guess. Uh-huh. Um, and well, because it has strings that, on it, so she doesn't want pre- presents <laughs> with strings, you know. So, it's like the rest yeah, of us, I'm, don't usually like presents with strings attached. But still, <laughs> what you can so do I is, are know. you? The first thing you do is you continue to pray for them. Like if you're gonna, uh, instead of if they already said if you've already sent them rosaries, then you say a rosary for them at least once a week and use their name. So, like if one's name's. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, Jack. whatever. Jack, you sit there and say, every time you say the rosary, pray for Jack now and at the hour of his death. Pray for Jack now at the hour of his death. So you insert their names on the beads. And that way you're really doing something. And that, as their godparent, that would be one of the greatest things you can do. And then, you know, as time goes on, then you sit there and you get like books or CDs uh, put out by Lighthouse Media and say, hey, I, I listened to CD on the Mass or Confession or, you know, the, the teaching of the church or whatever. And I really liked it. I'm just sending it to you. If you're interested, listen to it. If not, throw it out. And so it's a different way of uh, 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 inviting people to know back to the faith. Does that help you? Okay. Yes, it does. I just, okay. I just was like... I don't know what you do. I just feel like I'm offending the her, most, and I yeah. don't want to push him away. Or, no, you know. the number one thing, the most powerful thing we can do on this earth is pray. It's more powerful than a nuclear bomb. And you can oh. never, ever, ever, ever negate the power of prayer. It can do oh. all things. Okay? Yes. Thank you, Father. Thank Jesus. you. God bless you. God bless you. Bye-bye. 1-800-585-9396. Still time for your phone calls. We'll head back to Columbus, Ohio. Nancy Joe is in Columbus listening on St. Gabriel Radio. Nancy Joe, you're on with Father Larry. Hello, Nancy Le- Joe. Well, Father Larry, you rock. I Yo, just thanks. to let you know that. <laughs> um, I'm calling as a new Catholic as of two years ago at the Welcome. age of 60. I joined the Catholic Church. Okay. And this last April, my 30-year-old daughter joined as well. Blessed so, be from, God. Look at that. Welcome. Uh, two new Catholics, one in Ohio and one in St. Petersburg, Florida. Thanks wow. for having us. <laughs> Absolutely. That is so good. It's so good to be part of the family, huh? It's oh, good to hear here. Amazing. She and I have been listening to the radio and comparing notes, and, and it's been an absolute ball exploring Great everything job. with my daughter. Blessed be God. Well, welcome, welcome, welcome. It's good to have you. Now keep praying for all of us, huh? Oh, please. And to include my Marine, Staff Sergeant Marine son in that, too. He's oh, absolutely. Diego, oh, a great place. Overseas, so. Sure. Well, he's in heaven right now. <laughs> Good job. Well, I love San Diego. It's my favorite place. I go there a couple times a year, every year. Well, you so. have an awesome day, Father Larry. I you, too. You Thank you, thank you for calling day. us, Nancy Joe. God bless you. Thank you. Bye. We, we heading out of Denver, Colorado. Ted's in Denver listening on Denver Catholic Radio. Ted, you're on with Father Larry. Hello, Ted. Father Larry, I'm happy Thursday. I love you much. Thank you very much. Welcome. Question on, thank you, sir. A couple weeks ago, possibly last week, I, I can't remember that, I caught the program or your conversation with us, um, caller, late or very late carnival, but you were talking about at the end of the earth and the final judgment. That you mentioned that, you know, if I missed this, then please correct me. That okay. we will be coming back to Earth um, in our physical state, or words to that effect. Did I am I missing that? But I no, uh, well, we won't be coming thing. back to Earth. We will be because uh, there'll be a new heavens and a new Earth, but we will get a new body. You know, just like everything, you have to always know, just like Jesus, so like us. So Jesus wrote, uh, rose physically, and so shall we. At the yeah. end of time, we get a physical resurrection. So you will always be a human being, which by definition is the union of a body and a soul. Even those who go to hell.
now still have a resurrection of the body, but it'll suffer for all eternity. I understand. And okay. you also mentioned that we could have a reconciliation with former family members. Yes. Is that also possible? Uh, of course, because anyone who dies in the faith are still alive in the faith. So we can, you know, we talk about the communion of saints. So like, again, every time you go to communion, you just don't have communion with Jesus. You also have communion with everyone who is in Christ. So that, you know, so if your mother is dead and she, she's, uh, even if she's in purgatory or if she's in heaven, there still can be a great relationship there. And I've talked about, I'm closer to my father today and he's, he's been dead over 30 some years than I was when he was alive. Alive because he sees the face of God. I pray, and but I, after all these masses, I've said for him, he better. It's all I understand. Good. Is there a place I can go to read some books or scripture Sunday that I can read more about that? Well, one of the things you can always look up is the uh, the four last things, and the four last things is traditional Catholic teaching on uh, uh, life, death, heaven, hell, purgatory, and explains all those things and goes into them in great detail. In the catechism. It's in the catechism, of course. Okay, the I'll catechism will talk about all that. Life everlasting. Okay? Wonderful. Thank you very much, Father. Thank Larry. you, Ted. God bless you. Have a great day. God bless you. You too, sir. Thank you. Father Larry, have you ever been to the Maritime Provinces in Canada? Where are they? Well, they're in the Northeast. They're, it's, they're, they're, uh, they're a proof of the existence of God, as far as I'm oh, concerned. Okay. Just beautiful I've been country. to Halifax. Is that part of the other? I've been yeah. to Seattle. Yeah, I've been yeah. to both Well, places, it's huh? actually the other direction. But anyway. Yes, I've been Mark, to Halifax. Mark is in New Brunswick, and he is <laughs> oh, listening great. to there EWTN on Sirius XM. Channel 130. Mark, you're on with Father Larry. Oh, hi, Father. How you doing? Hello, Mark. What's up? Up in New Brunswick. Oh, it's, uh, no, we're doing pretty good up here. The weather's okay. fine. Okay. Okay, what's up? Uh, well, <clears throat> my uh, my sister-in-law. This would be my 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 wife's sister. Okay, uh, she is uh, she's been married to a woman uh, mm-hmm. for a few years now, mm-hmm. and uh, just recently they've uh, they've just adopted a ten-year-old girl, right? Mm-hmm. And and I'm I'm just having a real hard time. Uh, figuring out, you know, what, uh, uh, kind of how to, how to deal with that, how to handle that. And, sure. The best thing to do is you love that child, you know, because she, of all things, didn't ask to be adopted into that situation. So the last thing you want to do is uh, help her, is that child to feel uh, uh, out of it. But she needs to be loved even more now because she's in a, you know, uh, between uh, them, it can be, she's being exposed to an evil situation, if you will. So more than ever, you need to love that child and accept that child. You know, even uh, Bishop Pack. Paparaki, who just came out very strong about, you know, homosexuals in union and not burying that, he still says about those children should, could still go to uh, 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 Catholic schools and different things, because it's not the children's fault who they were adopted by. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, I mean, the last thing I'd want to do is, uh, I mean, I, I, I believe in, I, I do believe in adoption instead of abortion, so of course. obviously... This is a better situation than the alternative. Obviously. Of course, obviously. And, so that's uh, why. You... You know, I, I just always think of like I, I, you know, I read a lot of through the uh, the gospels and so on, and sure, how, how Jesus dealt with sinners and he accepted them. But sure, you know, I, I was kind of thinking in this situation, what what would he do? You know, and uh, well, sure, he would love the people. I mean, again, the the biggest thing is to get them to know Jesus because once a person really knows Jesus conversion happens automatically most people who never come to conversion is because they never knew Jesus that's the point Father Larry would you leave us with a blessing sure almighty God we ask you to bless everyone who's listening to us now with your peace in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit Amen on behalf of our host Father Larry Richards producer Michael McCall call screener Rich Jesse and our social media maven Mr. Jeff Burson I'm Jack Williams. Thanks so much for taking a little time out of your Thursday to join us on Open Line. Back at it tomorrow, our very own Vice President of Theology, Colin Donovan, is in the house. Until we get together then, God bless.